Do black holes exist? Well, yeah, we, we see all sorts of evidence for them. Remember, when black holes were first theorized, they were just an artifact, a product of the equations of general relativity. And they thought, uh, no, there's no way that can exist in nature. Nature hates singularities. You can't compress enough stuff to get a tight enough, high enough density to actually create a singularity, form a black hole. It's just fiction, guys. But Mother Nature has a way of surprising us. And when you run through the calculations of what a black hole might look like, there are some uh, observable predictions. There are some, some ways you can test for the existence of black holes. And when we started finding white dwarfs and neutron stars, which are incredibly dense balls of matter, like multiple times the mass of the sun crammed into a volume smaller than a city, we thought, uh, well, maybe they could crunch smaller, but there's got to be something to stop it. There's got to be some extra force, something to present a total catastrophic collapse to actually make a black hole. But then we started running the numbers for what happens inside of supernova, and, or right before supernova happens, when you have this immense weight of a star pressing in on its core. And it was enough to overwhelm any forces we could think about. So... There's a plausible generation mechanism for creating black holes in the universe. And then we start to ask, well, what would it look like? Well, how would a black hole behave? Well, if a black hole were in orbit around another star and some of that star's gas were to be stripped off of its atmosphere and fall into the black hole, well, there'd be all that material cramming into a tiny little volume trying to reach that event horizon in the black hole. Well, if it did that, it'd get really, really hot and it might glow in x-rays with a, with a certain spectrum, a certain signature. And we see it. We see it. We don't see the black hole itself because they're small and uh, black but we see their effects around binary stars. And when we look in the center of the Milky Way galaxy, we, we see stars orbiting something, something that we can't see, something that's very big, but very dark. You run the numbers, what could the density be? What could be the mass and the size? And uh, uh, it fits the description of a black hole. We, we look at quasars. What's powering these massive engines? Uh, the only thing that can really do it is a giant black hole in the gravitational attraction of matter around it. LIGO detects gravitational waves. Yes, what would happen if two black holes merge together? Well, it ripples space-time with a particular signature, and dang it, we see that signature. Even though black holes were thought to be an impossibility, like how could nature possibly allow black holes to exist? Well, we're not exactly sure, but black holes do exist. They're everywhere. We're surrounded by them. There's small ones. There's big ones. There might even be medium ones. Black holes are in our universe. They're, it's an unescapable, inescapable, something that you can't escape conclusion that black holes exist in our universe. And you can try to concoct alternatives. Uh, maybe it's quark stars. Uh, maybe dark matter groups together to make stars in the centers of galaxies. But nothing quite fits. Nothing quite fits like a simple black hole. You can't explain all the observations with any of the alternatives. It appears that black holes exist even though they shouldn't, which is weird. Hey, it's me again. I know you just watched a few minutes of me, but who couldn't use a little bit more me? I'm just here to beg you to please subscribe. And if I remember, there's going to be a button like right here uh, where I'm vaguely gesturing so that you can click the button and subscribe and it's super handy. Uh, this is so that you can get the latest updates of all my shows. I mean, that's basically how it works. So if you like what you just saw, uh, you'll get more of it if you subscribe. Super easy.